Hi, I'm Jackie Caratini from the University of Wisconsin-Madison Division of Extension and welcome to UW Money As You Grow Book Read. In today's video, I'll read the book Those Shoes by Maribeth Boltz. What do you think the book is going to be about? Did you guess that this book is about a boy who wants the same shoes as his friends? At the end of the story, I'll give you some ideas for things to talk about and a fun activity that you can do at home to learn more about discussing needs versus wants, setting priorities, and helping others. So let's start. Those shoes. I have dreams about those shoes. Black high tops with two white stripes. His dream, it says, buy those shoes. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here, just need, Grandma says. And what you need are new boots for winter. Brandon T. comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest runner before those shoes came along. Can you see? He's got the black and white shoes. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day. Just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. See him going up and down the hall? Next, Alan, Jacoby, and Terrence each get a pair. So look, they all have them on, but not him. Then, one day, in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfre, the guidance counselor says. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only pair of shoes that are my size, Velcro, like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. They even have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. Can you see the blue shoes with a tiger on them? Velcro. When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Elfrey shoes and laughs. And so does Terrence and Brandon T. and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Elfrey. I nod and I turn my back. I'm not going to cry about any dumb shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes. And my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might just bust. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I've got a little bit of money set aside. It might be enough. You just never know. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she could check the price. When she sees it, she sits down real heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head no. They look kind of sad, don't they? Then I remember the thrift shop. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and he had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoe except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the next thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is a third thrift shop. I see something in the window. <gasps> Look, he's peeking in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape, $2.50. It's those shoes. See them? There they are. Black high tops, white stripes. My heart is pounding so hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up my baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot in the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they'll fit. Look how excited he is.
Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoe. Oh, Jeremy, she says, I can't spend good money on shoes if they don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes won't fall off right then and there. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway with my own money. And I squeeze them on and I limp to the bus stop. Is he happy? Look in, he's looking at himself in the mirror in his fun shoes and he took off the Mr. Elfrey shoes. At home, a few days later, Grandma puts the new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say. Grandma gives me a big hug. Do they look happy now? No, they both look kind of sad, don't they? I check every day. But those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Elfries to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up, and his feet look smaller than mine. Look, he's got tape on the bottom of his shoe. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio is there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Elfries shoes. He's running, and tape is coming off his shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoe smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think, I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what, Antonio says, breathing really hard and heavy. What do you think he's thinking about? What do you think he wants to do? Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over, too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't ever wear them, Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night, I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Look, he's laying in bed, and he's thinking about those shoes. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell, and run. Can you see him? He's run down the street. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my Mr. Elfrey's shoes. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall? It's then, I remember, I have in my backpack. New boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn. Standing in the line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and I give him a nudge. Let's race. They're running off in their boots. As you heard the book, Jeremy's grandmother plans to buy him winter boots, but Jeremy wants the shoes like all the other kids are wearing. He spends his own money to buy those shoes, even though they don't fit him very well. Jeremy decides to give those shoes away and wear the boots to play outside with his friend. Here are some questions that you can talk about together. Are there things that you really want and things that you really need? How do you tell the difference?
Do you ever want to have the same things as your brother or sister or your friends? Have you ever had to save your own money for something that you really wanted but didn't really need? Have you ever shared something with a, that you loved with others? How did that make you feel? Here's an idea of an activity that you can do at home. On one side of a piece of paper, draw or color a picture with something that you need. Now, flip the paper over and on the other side of the sheet, draw something that you want but you don't necessarily need. Talk with your family about ways that you might or might not be able to work towards what you want. This is a great activity for families to discuss goals or something they want to work towards in the future. Sometimes helping others reach their goals makes us feel even better. Thank you. We hope you will join us next time for another UW Money As You Go book read.